I'm Brittany, this is Lan Jan, and welcome to Gay Watch, where we watch gay things, and sometimes we read them, and sometimes we have to backtrack in what we've been reading in order to um, make up for something we skipped. So, we are continuing our journey through Volume 5 of Moda Zouche. We have made it to the side stories, and, <coughs> pardon me, asthmatic cough, it's chronic, can't do much about it at the moment, we just try to deal. So, I skipped the second side story, Incense Burner, initially because I was informed of uh, 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 certain things that were apparently in that side story that I wasn't initially, uh, what's a good way to explain? I was just... I, I thought that there was content specifically in the short story that I wasn't sure that I would be comfortable with, like, reading aloud. Because um, I'm discovering that reading something aloud versus watching something and having it, like, happen to you, like, it's different. You guys have seen me have trouble reading particularly gross things, sad things, um, especially sad things, you know, hell, even, like, really adorable, happy, cute things are, like, hard to actually get out sometimes. Um, and so I did not know how I would engage with something, with content that would potentially um, be not something that I was ultimately comfortable with reading. Not that I, to make it perfectly clear, I do not judge nor care how people enjoy their fiction and what fiction they enjoy. That is not, absolutely not part of it. Um, but when it comes to this specific, uh, this specific uh, type of content, which would be I believed at the time, a uh, full uh, non-con. Um, I have very, my um, tolerance is not the right word for it. I just, the way that I can and choose to consume that type of content is highly situational. It's really easy for um, it to fall under parameters in which I am okay with it. Um, and it's really easy for it to fall under parameters in which I'm very much not okay with it. Um, it just kind of depends. And I may be able to, um, explain that a bit better once we get into this, because I have, I was then informed by a couple of people and like, you know, but just a bunch of comments in general that that's not necessarily the case actually, um, in this short story, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that um and so i have decided that gave me the idea that i can just sit down and record this because it's not a live stream anyway right now it's being pre-recorded and i could read it and if i get to a part that i am uncomfortable with reading i can skip it or you know i can just skip that part in the recording like whatever it's very doable and I feel very silly that I did not realize that at the time and just went to a full well then I'll just skip it and not do anything with it so here we are you will at the very least get most of this story because I am uh, aware that the part in question isn't even doesn't even you know take up that much space in this entire short story um what else what else? So we're just going to read and we're just going to find out. Um, I very much appreciate everybody. Thank you for voicing your uh, uh, enthusiasm for this side story. It's a lot of people's favorites. It's also a little bit controversial. We're going to find out why. Um, and uh, it's just the only way... I have, since I do reaction stuff and I can't find out a lot of things for myself because then it's spoilers and that therefore defeats the purpose, I rely on you guys' information and your comments informing me of certain things. Uh, so thank you very much for speaking up, being so enthusiastic about this side story, which then prompted me to um, look a little bit more into it and et cetera, et cetera. And now here we are. So thank you very much. That's the only way that I can really do things is based on what you tell me. <laughs> so thank you so much. And that has resulted in, you know, this video existing rather than not. So we are going to read the incense burner. It is going to, it is almost exactly 50 pages. So it is going to be this entire session. 
and we shall see and we shall discuss and um it's gonna be another bonding experience let me tell you we're about to get that much closer again let's let's go i'm now now i'm just super fascinated now i now i now i like i have to know i've also been better informed uh, better informed without getting spoiled as to what exactly is in it so i'm i'm curious i'm curious um, but I will obviously protect my boundaries just like I expect anybody else would protect theirs. So let's find out. Let's, let's find out. Wei Wuxian found an old incense burner while rummaging through the ancient room inside the Cloud Recesses treasure pavilion. The body of the burner resembled that of a bear, the nose that of an elephant, the eyes that of a rhino, and the feet like that of a tiger. Its belly housed the burner. The light smoke blew from its mouth when the incense was lit. Wow. Inside the tranquility room, Wei Wuxian asked, This thing looks pretty fun. It doesn't have a murderous or hostile aura, so it must not be anything harmful. Lan Jan, do you know what it's used for? Lan Wangji shook his head. Wei Wuxian took a whiff of the incense and determined there was nothing wrong with it either. Unable to make heads or tails of it, the two put the incense burner away to be examined further at a later date. They had only just lain down that night when they were seized by heavy drowsiness and fell into a deep slumber. Interesting. Is it like a dream thing? I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read. Going to shut up. Going to read. Some time had passed before Wei Wuxian woke up and discovered that he and Lan Wangji were not in the tranquility room at the cloud recesses. Instead, they were somewhere in the wilderness. He pulled himself upright from the ground, wondering, what is this place? Oh, we already have art. It is already beautiful. Oh, man. This is not a place in the present, Lan Wangji answered. Not the present? No way, said Wei Wuxian. He shook his sleeves and the feel of it was exceptionally real. What is this if not the present? Lan Wangji didn't respond. Instead, he silently approached a stream and gestured for Wei Wuxian to look into it. After he walked over, Wei Wuxian was stunned by the reflection he saw in the water. What the stream reflected was his face from his former life. Wei Wuxian's head shot up. Is this the incense burners doing? Lan Wangji nodded. I'm afraid so. Wei Wuxian stared at the face he'd not seen for a long time before moving his eyes away. It's fine. I tested that thing and sensed no resentment. It's definitely not an evil device. I figured it was probably the invention of some almighty immortal master who created it to help with cultivation. Or just recreation. Let's walk around and take stock of things. Though they remained unsure whether this was an illusion or something else, the pair began to leisurely wander the woods. Not long after, they saw a small cottage. When Wei Wuxian spotted it, he let out a soft, huh? What is it? Lan Wangji asked. Wei Wuxian examined the little cottage. This place looks a bit familiar. The wooden cottage looked extremely ordinary, like any old farming house. As puzzled as he was, he couldn't be sure whether he'd actually encountered it before. Just then, they heard the cracking of a loom from within. The two exchanged a look. Without needing to say a word, they approached the house together. When they came, oh, sorry, <laughs> I was here admiring the beautiful art for myself. Oh, look at that. I'll sleep in, and oh, let me move my hand because they've got the really gorgeous incense burner in there as well, of course. God, the art for this is so good. <sighs> it's ridiculous. I wonder if we could, like, campaign or something and get them to issue like a small like coffee table book of the art in like full color a girl can dream okay <coughs> when they came to the door and looked in they were both taken aback what was inside the cottage was an extreme departure from whatever terrors they had expected there were no sinister scoundrels no yow beasts or fierce corpses there was only one man, and he was and he was one they were both extremely familiar with. Inside the wooden cottage, there sat a Lan Wangji. Oh, they bo okay, all right, okay. 
All right. That Lan Wang Ji looked just as tall and handsome as the one standing next to Wei Wuxian. His blue and white robes were plain, though not coarse, and he retained the transcendent air of a distinguished cultivator all the same. The loom beside him seemed to be driven by magic. It moved on its own, creaking as it wove fabric. Meanwhile, the man himself sat next to the machine with a book rolled up in his hand, which he read with great concentration. The two of them were already at the door and had made quite a bit of noise, but Lan Wang Ji didn't seem to notice at all. His expression was impassive as he flipped a page with a long, fair, slender finger. That would be hilarious if he was studying porn. If, if like, this is a moment in which he was studying, you know, erotic, I, I would fucking die. Wei Wuxian looked at the Lan Wang Ji beside him, then looked at the Lan Wang Ji inside, then said with dawning understanding, I see, I see, good, because I don't, although the prospects of two Wangjis and one Wuxian has um, not escaped me. Lan Wangji's brows arched a little. This minuscule movement indicated that he was flabbergasted. What? <laughs> this, this, this. This, this is my dream, Wei Wuxian exclaimed. I mean, once again, who hasn't dreamed of two Lan Wang Jis, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. <coughs> Bonding. <coughs> Before he could say anything else, a black-clad figure came strolling over with airy steps. Erg... <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me, hang on. Woo. Overwhelmed by the prospect of two Wang Jis, am I? Lan Wang Ji fell even more silent. Oh, ha ha, hoo, hoo, ha, wrong. That was wrong. Um, before he could say anything else, a black clad figure came strolling over with airy steps. Urgaga, I'm back, he shouted, dragging out each syllable. Lan Wang Ji fell even more silent at the sight of that lively Wei Wu Shen, who carried a hoe over his shoulder, a fish trap in his hand, and a stalk of grass between his lips. Okay, so now we have, like, Two sets, uh, we have two sets of, I really can't, I really can't um, divulge what's in my head right now. If this was Wei Wuxian's dream, <coughs> breathe too deep. If this, <coughs> <sighs> it gets better the more the reading goes on. If this was Wei Wuxian's dream, it was quite logical that inhabitants of the dreamscape couldn't see them. Only then did the fabric-weaving Lan Wang Ji look up. Surprisingly, the corners of his lips hooked slightly upward on seeing Wei Wuxian, then quickly flattened. He rose to his feet to welcome him and poured him a cup of water. Wei Wuxian spat out the grass in his mouth and sat down by the small wooden table. He picked up the cup without a word and gulped it down in one go. Only after that did he begin to speak. The sun was too hot out there today. I'm scorched. I left the rest of the work in the fields. I give up. I'll see about going back if I've got the time. Lan Wangji answered with a hmm and retrieved a snowy white cloth which he handed to Wei Wuxian. However, Wei Wuxian only grinned and leaned his face close, his intent obvious. He wanted Lan Wangji to wash his, wash his face for him. Lan Wangji didn't seem to mind in the least and actually began to wipe his face with serious concentration. Although Wei Wuxian enjoyed the surface, his mouth didn't take a break. I went and played in the river earlier and caught two fish. Urgaga, make fish soup. Make fish soup for me tonight. Mm. Mm. How is carp usually cooked in Gusu? Lan Jin, do you know how to make Sichuan fish with pickled greens? I like that dish. Absolutely do not make it sweet. I had it sweet once and almost threw up. Mm. I know how. It's been hotter and hotter these days. The bathwater doesn't have to be that hot tonight, so I only chopped half the regular amount of firewood. Hmm. That is fine. Lan Wangji watched the two casually chatting away about small household matters and asked, This is your dream? Wei Wuxian was laughing so hard he was going to sustain internal injuries. Um. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. There was a period of time when I kept having dreams like this for some reason. 
some reason, some unknowable reason, some uh, unbelievable, like just completely uh, out of nowhere reason that couldn't possibly be fathomed. Why would you dream about domesticity with Lan Wangji? It just, it boggles the mind. We couldn't possibly wrap our heads around it. <sighs> I dreamt that we'd retired and retreated from the world to live on some wild mountain. I'd go out to hunt and work the fields while you would watch the house and weave cloth and cook for me. Oh yeah, and you'd manage the money too, and patch up my clothes at night. Every time I had the dream, I'd tell you to heat up the bath water and we'd bathe together every evening. But every time I'd wake up just before the clothes came off. What a shame. Wei Wuxian didn't find it at all embarrassing for Lan Wangji to have witnessed a dream like this. In fact, he was delighting in it. He was beside himself with glee, and Lan Wangji's eyes softened as he watched him. Just as well. Hello? Wei Wuxian's dream was full of nothing but ordinary minutia. They cooked, ate, fed the chickens, chopped firewood, and sure enough, the dream came to an abrupt end right as the bathwater was heated. He's dreaming domesticity. <sighs> oh my god, y'all really weren't kidding. I remember seeing um, just, you know, different... Uh, Modao Sushi Untamed related fandom stuff. And there was definitely like a lot of mentions about how, you know, the in the um, the turning on its head of Wei Wushan being the one to wind up wanting to just settle down on a nice farm somewhere and like have a little quiet domestic life with Lan Jen. And meanwhile, Lan Jen was like, I will rail this boy into the next decade, right? And how you didn't expect that from me. They literally like they were y'all were being extremely literal there i did not realize that <coughs> not to this like that's a one-to-one -one. there is no that's incredibly literal <clears throat> the two departed from the cottage and wandered the dreamscape for a little while before they found an elegant and tranquil pavilion outside the building was a magnolia tree the blooms upon its outstretched branches diffused a faint, refreshing fragrance through the night air. The dream had changed location to a place that the two of them recognized in a heartbeat. It was the Cloud Recesses Library Pavilion. There was light coming from a wooden window on the second floor and the faint sound of voices. Wei Wuxian looked up. Shall we go and take a peek? But for some reason, Lan Wangji wasn't acting like his usual self. He stopped in his tracks and stared contemplatively at the at that window, as if hesitant. Wei Wuxian found this strange. He couldn't think of any reason why Lan Wangji wouldn't want to go in. What's wrong? he asked. Lan Wangji shook his head slightly. He mulled it over for a moment, but just as he was about to speak, there was a sudden burst of uproarious laughter inside the library pavilion. Wei Wuxian's eyes instantly lit up at the sound. He rushed inside, leaping up the stairs three steps at a time. Naturally, Lan Wangji would not remain outside by himself, so he entered as well. As the pair approached the lamplit room, they did indeed see something very interesting. A 15- or 16-year-old Wei Ying sat on a light-colored mat next to the desk reserved for transcription punishment. He was slapping the table and laughing uproariously. There was an erotic picture book on the floor, and a likewise 15- or 16-year-old Lan Jen huddled in a corner of the room like he was evading a great venom. He was bellowing in rage. Wei Ying! The young Wei Ying was laughing so hard that he nearly rolled beneath the desk, and it was with great difficulty that he raised his hand. Here! I'm here! Wei Wuxin was about to fall over laughing himself. Tugging at Lan Wangji behind, beside him, he said, This dream's good. I can't anymore. Lan Jen, look at you. Look at you back then. That face. However, Lan Wangji's expression was growing increasingly odd. Wei Wuxin pulled him down to sit on a mat on the side of the room. With a hand propping up his cheek, he grinned as he watched their younger selves scuffle and quarrel. On the other side of the room, the young Lan Jen had already drawn Bi Chen. Wei Ying quickly grabbed Su Bian and flashed a few centimeters of the blade from its sheath. Manners, he reminded him, Lan Er Gongji. Watch your manners! I've brought a sword today, too. If we start fighting, what's going to happen to your family's library pavilion? Lan Jen was outraged. Wei Ying, you... What kind of person are you? Wei Ying arched his brows. What else can I be? A man. Shameless, Lan Jen rebuked. Do you need to feel shame over liking something like this? Do you need to feel shame over something like this? Don't tell me you've never seen that sort of thing. I don't believe it.
Wei Ying said. Having endured this for a while, Landren's face was frosty as he, as he lunged with his sword. <coughs> what, you're fighting for real? Shocked, Wei Ying also brandished his sword and struck back, and just like that, the two actually started trading blows inside the library pavilion. Wei Wuxian made a noise of confusion at this turn of events. He turned to look at Lan Wangji. Is that how it went? How come I remember we didn't actually fight at that time? Lan Wangji remained silent. Although Wei Wuxian looked at him, he was subtly evading his gaze. More and more, Wei Wuxian felt that he was acting strange tonight. Just as he was about to ask about it, however, he heard the little Wei Ying begin to tease as he fought. Very good, very good. You can release and retract, tense and relax at will. Excellent swordplay. But Lan Jan, oh, Lan Jan, look at you. You're so red in the face. Are you flushed because you're fighting with me, or are you blushing because you saw something good earlier? <coughs> little Lan Jan wasn't blushing at all. He swung his sword. Nonsense. Wei Ying bent backward, performing an extremely pliable iron board technique to dodge the attack, then straightened back up. With incredibly quick fingers, he pinched Lan Jan's smooth, fair face. Nonsense. Why don't you feel your own face? It's so hot. Lan Jan's face blushed and blanched, and he raised a hand to smack away Wei Ying's claws. But Wei Ying had already withdrawn his hand, and Lan Jan ended up smacking thin air and nearly hitting himself. Wei Ying spun with skill and ease and chided him leisurely. Lan Jan, oh Lan Jan, I'm not trying to lecture you or anything, but look at everyone else your age. Who gets red in the face as easily as you? You can't handle even a little stimulation. You're too tender. This scene had never happened, nor was it anything Wei Wuxian had ever dreamed about happening. And so, this dream could only belong to Lan Wang Ji. Uh-huh. He watched it play out with relish. Lan Jan, you know me so well, that certainly is something I'd say, Wei Wuxian said. However, he didn't notice that Lan Wangji now seemed almost restless. From the other side of the room, Wei Ying continued, It's pretty boring, transcribing books. Why don't I teach you about this stuff while I'm at it? Consider it my thanks for your supervision. After enduring his nonsense this long, Lan Jan had finally had enough. Bi Chen shot over, the two swords crossed, and both were sent crashing out the window as a result of the clash. Seeing Su Bian leave his hand, Wei Ying was slightly stunned. Hey, my sword! Shouting in dismay, he was about to leap out the window to grab for his sword when Lan Jen pounced on him from behind and slammed him to the floor. I had a feeling. Wei Ying's head knocked against the floor with the impact and he fought to get up, flustered. After a few blows were traded back and forth, it devolved into a messy, tangled brawl. Wei Ying kicked in earnest and flung his arms out in every direction, but no matter how he tried, he couldn't prevent Lan Jen from pinning all four of his limbs down. It was like he'd been trapped by an impenetrable iron net. Lan Jen! Lan Jen, what are you doing? I was joking, joking! What are you doing? Taking it so seriously! Lan Jen seized both of Wei Ying's wrists and pressed them to his back. Right. What did you say? <clears throat> What did you say you were going to teach me? He asked darkly. His tone sounded detached, but in his eyes looked a volcano on the verge of... Look, <laughs> got ahead of myself. But in his eyes looked a lurked a volcano on the edge, on the verge of eruption. Sorry, I'm having... Uh, there's a lot of thoughts going through my head right now. <clears throat> Their strength had been evenly matched to begin with, but Wei Ying's moment of carelessness had gotten him pinned firmly to the ground and seized by a vital point. He had no choice but to play dumb. I didn't say anything. What did I say? Nothing, Lan Jen pressed. Nothing, Wei Ying insisted self-righteously, then asked, Lan Jen, don't be such a stick in the mud. Don't take everything I say so seriously. You even believe me when I spout nonsense like this. What's there to be angry about? I'll shut up, okay? Let me go. I haven't finished copying today's book. I'm done playing. Lan Jen's expression relaxed somewhat, and he seemed to slacken his grip. But the moment Wei Ying pulled his wrists from Lan Jan's clutches, his eyes squinted into crescents and darted from side to side, and he swung out with a smack at once. Little did he know Lan Jan was already prepared. He swiftly caught Wei Ying the moment he attacked and subdued him anew. This time, he used a heavier hand and twisted Wei Ying's wrist at an even more severe angle. Wei Ying yelped incessantly, I said I was joking! Lan Jan, can't you take a joke? 
Dancing flames could be vaguely seen in Lanjan's eyes. Without another word, he yanked off his forehead ribbon and wound it three times around Wei Ying's hands before tying a dead knot to secure it. Wei Wuxian, who hadn't expected such a development whatsoever, me neither, was left gap gaping at the sight. It took him a while before he could turn his head to look at Lan Wangji. When he did, he discovered that while there were no traces of red on Lan Wangji's perpetually snowy white complexion, his earlobes had turned pink. Wei Wuxian scooted over slightly. Lanergaga, this dream of yours doesn't seem quite right, eh? Lan Wangji was momentarily speechless before he suddenly moved to get up. Do not watch anymore. Wei Wuxian immediately on his, yanked on his sleeve to keep him from standing up. Don't go. I want to see what else happens in your dream. We haven't even gotten to the good part yet. Next to the desk inside the library pavilion, Wei Ying shrieked and howled as he was tied up. After he quieted down, he tried to reason with Lan Zhen. <coughs> Lan Zhen, a gentleman uses his mouth, not his hands. You're being narrow-minded right now. Think about it. Did I say anything bad about you? <coughs> I think a gentleman's about to use his mouth. I don't know about you. All I said was that you're tender and you don't understand certain things, that's all. Is that not the truth, though? Wei Ying argued. There really are some adult things you don't understand. Treating, my, treating me like this just because I spoke the truth, isn't that narrow-minded? Who said I do not understand? Lan Chen replied coolly. Wei Ying quirked an eyebrow and laughed. Oh, really? Don't be so stubborn like hell you do. The sudden yelp of alarm was because Lan Zhen had suddenly grabbed a specific part of Wei Ying's lower body. With a coldly handsome yet childish face, Lan Zhen repeated his question. Who said I do not understand? Wei Wuxian was draped over Lan Wangji, practically whispering into his ear as he asked a question of his own. Yeah, who said you don't understand? As the saying goes, you dream at night what you think in the day. So fess up, Lan Zhen, did you desperately want to do this to me back then? Who would have thought that you were like this, Hang Wanjun? While Lan Wangji remained expressionless, the smear of pink had crept down to his fair neck and his fingers settled on his knees and perceptibly curled. Over on the other side of the room, little Wei Ying lay slack on the floor and drew sharp breaths. Something quite precious to him had been seized, after all. What the hell are you doing, Lan Zhen? Have you gone mad? Lan Zhen had already slotted himself between Wei Ying's legs in a position that made Wei Ying feel quite threatened. Seeing how things were going awry, he quickly changed his tune. No, 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 no. No one said you didn't understand. You, you let me go first. We can talk this out. He wrenched his hands wildly, but unfortunately the Lan Clan forehead ribbon was made of a most exceptional material. No matter how he fought, he couldn't struggle free or untie the knot. He jerked another couple of times, then noticed a book that had fallen on the floor nearby. He quickly grabbed it and threw it at Lan Zhen, hoping to smack some sense back into him with words of wisdom. Come to your senses! The book slammed against Lan Zhen's chest, then dropped to the floor between Wei Ying's open legs, where it flipped open to display its pages. Lan Zhen looked down and his eyes froze on the tableau on display. Somehow, the book did just so happened to fall wanted to fall open on an erotic illustration that was particularly bold and explicit in nature. And furthermore, the two people in the piece were both men. Wei Wuxian distinctly remembered the erotica he had shown Lan Wangji, having nothing homosexual at, at all in it. It definitely, di it definitely hadn't contained a page like that. He was in awe, helpless to be anything but. This detailed addition to the scene in Lan Wangji's dream it was just too rich for words. He really had to hand it to him. Lan Zhen stared unblinkingly at that page. Wei Ying spotted the picture too and instantly felt a little awkward. Um, he cried his grievances bitterly. He cried his grievances bitterly in his mind. In the end, he still felt fighting was more effective than arguing, and so he summoned all his might, pulled one leg free, and kicked. However, Lan Zhen spared a hand to grip him at the bend of his knee, then pried his legs apart into an even more splayed position. He yanked off Wei Ying's belt and trousers in two swift movements. Wei Ying felt a sudden chill down below. When he looked down, his heart went cold as well. Lan Zhen, what are you doing? He exclaimed in alarm. 
Wei Wushan, enthralled by the sight, was beside himself with excitement. You, duh, he said in response, unable to resist. With his trousers removed, the lower half of Wei Ying's body was completely naked. His long, slender, pearl-white legs kicked like mad. Lan Zhen pinned his legs down. Referencing the illustration in the erotica, his hand reached straight for the tightly closed spot of pink between Wei Ying's round, round white ass cheeks. This really is Lan Wang's use dream. Also, it's a dream. We'll get there. We'll get there. I have a lot of thoughts. I have so many thoughts. I have all of them, but we need to get there because full context in situations like this absolutely matters. Wei Ying's bottom half was firmly and entirely subdued. Even with his private parts being violated, he had nowhere to run. Lan Zhen rubbed the pink spot with two fingers, and Wei Ying shuddered. He forced away the flash of bashfulness that crossed his face, then resumed squirming and struggling. The young man bearing down on him, however, had a dark look in his eyes. Lan Zhen's lips pursed tight, and his hand continued to rhythmically push against Wei Ying's private place. I wonder, I have like translation, I'm super curious about the translation of scenes like this and the use of some words over others. Uh, my mind's everywhere, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he gradually added force to his fingers until the little pink hole slowly softened and opened. Shyly, it swallowed a notch of the fair finger that rubbed it. Grinning, Wei Wushan looked at Lan Wangji ensconce. No wonder you didn't want to come in here earlier, Hang Wanjun. You probably want to dig a hole to hide in. I caught you red-handed doing things like this to me in your dreams. Although Lan Wangji remained poised and proper where he sat beside him, his eyes were downcast and his lashes seemed to tremble slightly. Cheeks still propped on his hand, Wei Wushan continued to watch his younger self being forcibly opened by the young Lan Zhen. He chuckled, Hang Wanjun, if you've got the guts to dream about it after the fact, why didn't you have the guts to actually do it back then? I... Lan Wangji seized his hands before he could finish and pushed him down on the floor to seal his mouth. Wei Wushan felt the hotness of Lan Wangji's cheeks and the unusually frantic beating of his heart. Amused, he murmured when their wet lips parted, What, feeling shy again? Lan Wangji's breathing was uncommonly harsh, and he didn't respond. Or are you hard? Wei Wushan pushed further. Over by the desk, a long wailing moan escaped Wei Ying's throat. Lan Zhen was looming over him, their bodies seamlessly joined. Clearly, he was in the process of penetration. At the feeling of the hard foreign object invading his body bit by bit, Wei Ying was in so much discomfort that his legs curled in, but his hands were securely bound by the forehead ribbon. Unable to move, he could only bang the back of his head soundly against the floor to express his pain. Lan Zhen cradled his head and cradled his head with his hand while at the same time driving fully into Wei Ying's body. The spot of pink had struggled to swallow even a single finger at first, but was now forced open and choking on a large, uh, scar large, scalding hot and hard object, if you do say so yourself, Lan Wangji. The folds at its entrance were stretched smooth. Wei Ying was still a little dazed, like he hadn't yet grasped the reality of things, but small whimpers were unconscious but small whimpers unconsciously escaped his throat when Lan Zhen began to slowly rock his hips as per the instructions in the erotica. Lan Zhen, you might have been little at the time, but some parts of you weren't little at all, Wei Wushan said to Lan Wangji. I was a virgin back then, you know. That's gotta be rough on him. Wei Wushan's attitude is just fucking sending me through the whole... I have so many thoughts. We gotta get... The... Anyway. As he spoke, he used his knees to deliberately rub between Lan Wangji's legs. Mm-hmm. Watching an erotic live show had piqued his interest and was only natural, and he now wanted to feel just how rough that thing of Lan Wangji's could be. Hello? He didn't need to rub for long before Lan Wangji tore off the bottom of his robe and his trousers without a word. Wei Wushan instinctively spread his legs and wrapped them around his waist, gripping his member. Member, member was one of the was uh, one of the words that made me really curious about the specific word choices, and I think some possibly some words that were allowed to be used in China versus not, but I might be misremembering that. Uh, Lan Wangji rubbed its terrifyingly hard head against Wei Wushan's entrance. 
The two of them messed around and tangled with each other nearly every day, so Wei Wuxian was already in perfect concert with him, both body and mind. He hugged Lan Wangji's neck tightly and took a deep breath as he was breached, and Lan Wangji speared all the way inside. The entry was smooth. He was soft inside, all hot and wet. The channel clenched hard around the massive, 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 massive invader in welcome, as if it had been made just to accept the man's intrusion. This is like... This is so fan fiction-y, but in like all the best ways. Just all the best ways. I lost my spot. It didn't take long before the damp, sticky sound of flesh slapping against flesh came from the place where they were joined. Lan Wangji was endowed with an impressive, heavyweight manhood. You cannot be telling me these things about Lan Wangji. <coughs> <coughs> Its shaft was naturally curved at the head, and every time he thrust, he pressed against the most weak and sensitive spot inside Wei Bushan with deadly accuracy. Fan fiction in all the best ways. Written by the actual author. I'm not going to make it. <sighs> Overwhelming passion washed over both of them every time he dragged past that spot. Lan Wangji's pounding and was driving Wei Wuxian out of his mind. Can you? I mean, yeah. His insides contracted without rhythm as pleasure spread from the top of his head to the tips of his toes. He threw his head back in bliss and at that arched angle could see the teenage Wei Ying and Lan Wangji's dream being subjected to the same extreme of pleasure and pain. He lay there in a mess of scrolls and books, his wrists tightly bound and powerlessly fixed above his head. His black hair was loose and scattered, red ribbon lost in their scuffle. His eyes were half-lidded and hazy, wet and on the verge of tears. He'd been pinned and fucked for a while now. Having determined that Wei Ying's legs weren't spread wide enough, Lan Jan caught one and put it over his shoulder before resuming his violent pounding. The leg, unable to hold that position, quickly slipped down to the rest to rest in the crook of his arm. The smooth, beautiful lines of Wei Ying's calf and the muscles of his inner thigh convulsed slightly. The massive, curved, scalding thing inside him. Again, with the mass, we just keep, I mean, all right. He's got a baseball bat uh, between his legs. It's totally uh, fine. Scalding thing inside him was thrusting in and out nonstop, driving him to the edge. His first time had found him at a complete loss. He gripped Lan Jen's shoulders like a drowning man, probably barely aware of where he was right now, much less able to remember that the unbearable torment was being inflicted by the one currently thrashing inside him. As he watched his teen self being fucked by a teen Lan Jen until he was flushed and shuddering, Wei Wuxian thought that this wasn't enough. It'd be even better if little Lan Jen were rougher, used more force, bullied little Wei Ying within an inch of his life until he was bawling his eyes out. Right now, this was far from enough. And this is why you communicate your fantasies with your partner, everybody. Especially when you get the inclination that you share the same fantasy. Because then the other party can bring in, like, their own flavor to the mix. And just combust, com combust, com uh, um, a, a uh, explosive combination. I was trying to be, like, a combustive combination. That's not, I don't think that's a word. <clears throat> the library pavilion was small, but two of its corners were overflowing with boundless salacity. Ooh, salacity? Salacity. It's a version of salacious. Salacity. Emphasis, syllable, I'll have to look that up. Wei Ying had been a little dazed earlier, but the wet, obscene slapping sounds seemed to have pulled him back to the present. He shuddered as he stared at the pavilion ceiling, then looked down, seeming to want to peek at the situation playing out lower on his body, but lacking the courage. After Lan Jen had plowed away and lowered his, with lowered head for a while, he lifted both of Wei Ying's legs onto his shoulders before leaning back down. As he fucked him, Wei Ying's waist was bent into a pliable arch, an angle that let him see just what was happening down there through eyes blurred by tears. The once perfectly clean little pink hole had been rubbed a deep, ripe red by Lan Wangji's member, and its rim was pitifully swollen. We're going to bond a little bit right now. This kind of detail about um, sphincters isn't totally my thing, but, you know, um, body fluids, worse. 
in my personal ranking of things. Body fluids are like an automatic hmm for me. This I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I guess I'm, I guess it's not so much a hmm as it is kind of neutral, you know, focusing on the whole CMJ, whole stretch and all that. I guess I'm a bit more neutral about that than anything outright like squick-ish about it. The long hot weapon weapon now we're really in fanfic land but again translations i'm so fascinated i need like the down low i'm sure people have like written essays about you know the specific types of translation of porn from chinese to english and certain words i want the essays i want the essays um still repeatedly thrust in and out mixing the milky pre -cum. see all you gotta do is mention it for me the thin strings of vivid red blood, oh, of course, and a bit of unknown fluid into a mess where the two were joined. To his surprise, Wei Ying's own member was at half-mast and trickling pre-cum. See, all I gotta do is mention it. This devastating sight completely stunned Wei Ying. It took him a good while before he somehow mustered the strength to suddenly struggle again. He broke free of Lan Jan's hold, then flipped around and qua crawled away on his knees, wanting to escape. After being pinned to the ground and so roughly fucked by Lanjan, he was already depleted of strength. His thighs and knees wobbled and trembled. He only managed to flop away for a short distance before his body gave out and he fell flat to the floor once more. The position hoisted his ripe snow white ass cheeks, it's the snow white ass cheeks for me, into the air on display. A mass of cum and blood flowed from the ravaged hole, hole, hole uh, between his ass cheeks and wound down his thighs. I guess also blood in this particular instance is like a, possibly like a little bit squickish for me. Like that's rough, but like me, mm, I, I don't know, but still not the same as bodily, bodily fluids. What is it with me and bodily fluids? I don't really know. I don't know where that came from. Uh, but uh, his inner thighs were a shocking sight, a field of crisscrossing red and purple finger marks. Just a single lurk, look would stir a powerful desire to abuse him further. Lanjan had witnessed this whole display. Eyes bloodshot, he chased after him without a word. Wei Ying felt a tightening around his waist as he was pinned in a deadlock once more, and the place that was and the <laughs> and the place that was briefly empty was immediately and solidly filled to the brim. He moaned and let out a weak protest. No. After suffering this ravaging, his entrance was already wet, tender, and a complete mess. It easily took the cock that had just been... Cock! That's the first time we've seen that word, I think. See, yeah, there goes um, my loosely remembered theory about like not being able to use cocks or using member instead in translations. I need the essays that had just been violating him and swallowed it whole. Wang Ying kneeled on all fours on the mat, his body constantly inching forward with the force of the thrusts. Mortification was clear on his face. Wild beasts made it in this position. He had seen them on occasion when he went out to roam the woods. He couldn't help but feel even more embarrassed to be taken from, to be taken from behind like this, and he clenched tighter. Lan Zhen gripped his waist and also began to ram with increasing yet... Me with increasing yet methodless? Methodless force. The brutal pounding went on for a while until, at last, Wei Ying couldn't take it anymore. Half of his face and his body were pressed to the floor, squished out of shape. He begged incoherently, Mercy, mercy, Lan Zhen, Lan Gangji, mercy, please. See? Now we know, because he mentioned earlier, this is probably more Wei Wuxian's speed. I would like to check in with him to see how he's t taking this. <clears throat> A plea like that was useless, of course, aside from provoking deeper and faster penetration. That is, Wei Wuxian laughed out loud. Oh God, his squealing is making me hard. Th thank you, thank you. This is what I, thank you. Don't show him mercy. Fuck him to death. That's the way. Mm-hmm. See, what did I? Thank you. Len Wangji pulled Wei Wuxian up to straddle him. The weight of his body allowed him to swallow Lan Wangji's cock deeper. I mean, yeah, that's the benefit of that position. So deep that it made Wei Wuxian wince and slightly scrunch up his face. He quickly adjusted his position and regained his focus on riding Lan Wangji, no longer having the mind to spew filth. As the wet slapping sound of flesh reached a crescendo, Wei Ying's cries were also becoming increasingly wretched. 
uh, Wiggins cries, we're also becoming increasingly wretched. Lenjen, you hear that? It's too deep. Don't go all the way in. My belly hurts. Every time Lenjen entered him, it was as though he wanted to skewer him all the way through. And considering the way that they've been emphasizing his size, I think that might actually be possible. Lenjen was rough and brutal, the force of his actions standing in stark contrast to the expression on his face. Wei Ying's ass was numb and red from the slamming. He'd practically lost feeling in his entire bottom half. Each time he struggled and tried to crawl away, he'd be yanked back and forced to take Lan Zhen's cock all the way into the deepest parts of him. This went on and on. L Listen to me, Wei Ying said with breathless, broken words. There's, there are people outside waiting for me. Jing Chang and the, Jing Chang and the others are still outside waiting for me. Hearing this, Lan Zhen abruptly pulled out of his body and flipped him over. Wei Ying let out a sob and immediately shrank into a ball, trying to hide by curling like a shrimp. His member was almost at full mast and on the edge of climax. His crotch was a thrilling sight, a mess of flowing fluids. <clears throat> His entrance was red and swollen from being forcibly used for such a long time, but the rim clenched at irregular intervals, opening and closing. See? That kind of stuff? That is when it gets more into squickish territory for me. It sputtered out drops of white and red, <clears throat> as if unimaginably thirsty. That uh, That's kind of uh, humorous. Loathed to part with the cock that had just been fucking it. Okay. That's respectable. Bonding. We're bonding right now. You and I, we're close. We're sisters. We're brothers. We're non-binary siblings. We're something. Meanwhile, Wei Wuxin was bouncing up and down on Lan Wangji, who had his arms around his waist, grabbing his ass. Until now, Lan Wangji's face had maintained its facade of tranquil tranquil detachment aside from his slightly erratic breathing nothing about his face would ever lead one to suspect what he was doing certainly no one would ever suspect that his hands were kneading Wei Wuxian's ass with tremendous and unchecked strength leaving bruising handprints on his full round cheeks he leaned down to he really likes Wei Wuxian's ass the dream has emphasized his ass more than once and now he leaned down to take the red dot on Wei Wuxian's uh, left breast into his mouth and lightly abuse it with his teeth. Wei Wuxian fucked himself with Lang Wanji's cock. It slicked dark red, dark red length, oh, dark red length, vanishing into the darkness between his cheeks again and again. The pleasure sent shivers down their spines. Over on the other side of the room, Lan Zhen stared at the half-dead Wei Ying for a bit before suddenly ripping open his ro robes and pinching his left nipple hard. Wang Ji, you are familiar with this sequence of events. I see you. We're going to talk about it in a second. He then brutally buried himself within him again. Wei Ying had only just caught his breath, still hypersensitive all over and unable to handle such treatment. With a groan, he began to weep in earnest as both his entrance and his insides clamped down hard. Lan Zhen almost seemed to be venting his fury on Wei Ying's nipples, twisting and kneading them until they swelled and peaked and turned red as blood. With every pinch, Wei Ying's inner walls clenched violently. The soft, wet heat relentlessly squeezed the weapon, not sure how I feel about that word, inside his body and perfectly outlined its shape. I mean, applicable in this context, certainly. But like, what is that? Just something about it feels very like 90s erotica euphemism. Uh, similar to member, which is probably why. But again, d I need the essays. I need the essays. Take a shot every time I say I need the essays. Uh, ba -ba. With, hello, hello, hello. Uh, the really squeezed weapon inside his body and perfectly outlined its shape. Lanjan, I was wrong. I was wrong. I shouldn't have said you were tender. I shouldn't have said you didn't understand anything. I don't dare teach you anymore, Wei Ying said through his weeping. Lanjan, Lanjan, did you hear me? Le Lanar Gongji, Lanar Giga. Lanjan faltered at the last address that Wei Ying nasally babbled and indeed softened his actions. With misty eyes, he leaned in and gently kissed Wei Ying's tearfully pleading lips. The bottom half of Wei Ying's body felt like it had been battered by a giant boulder. Which, once again, given the frequent, you know, mentions of the size of Lanch and is, I feel like you have been. His insides were stinging and hot, his waist sore, and his belly both sore and distended. 
His nipples were incredibly abused, and his mind was in a daze. Suddenly, he realized that the weapon battering him had slowed its assault. The two gently pressed their foreheads together, and a pair of cool lips pressed close to his. They tasted faintly sweet. When he opened his eyes, Lanjan's long, jet-black eyelashes were inches from his face. Lanjan was kissing him with intent concentration, and Wei Ying seemed to take some comfort from it. And so he opened his mouth and gently sucked on Lan Zhen's lips as he mumbled, More. He had meant more kisses, but Lan Zhen misunderstood and picked up the pace of his thrusts. You know? Hang on, let me double check something real quick about, okay. Something about mic volume. That randomly occurred to me. Wait, wait, ah, I'm over here. Wei Ying hissed and drew two sharp breaths, then quickly wrapped his arm around his arms around Lan Zhan's neck and kissed him himself. At first, Wei Ying had found it frightening to have his insides pounded by something so long, thick, and hard. Take a shot every time they emphasized. But after taking so many blows, he had developed a taste for the sensations that came alongside the sore ache of stretching, and slowly began to enjoy it, especially when Lan Zhen's slightly curved cock brutally pressed against a certain spot on his inner walls, a spot that sent pleasure coursing through his body like electricity and made him shudder. His member was getting harder and harder and drooled with more pre -cum. <clears throat> Unable to help himself, he began to twist at the waist. Sometimes, when Lan Zhen didn't hit the right spot, he'd even push himself against him to correct the, tra the trajectory. The cries coming out of his mouth also changed flavor. Ergaga, I beg you, Wei Ying pleaded. Lan Zhen ex exhaled a breath and asked in a deep voice, What? Wei Ying cupped his face and littered it with kisses. Ram me right in that spot, right where you just did, he whispered. Fuck me right there, won't you? Wordlessly, Lan Zhen did as Wei Ying wished and bent at the waist to drive himself in. It was a particularly hard thrust, and Wei Ying gasped, his limbs suddenly tightly wrapping around Lan Zhen's body. He cried, uh, half exclaimed, what? Half articulated, what? But Lan Zhen had already sealed his lips with his, focused entirely on kissing him. Wei Wuxian also entangled his tongue with Lan Wang Ji's, using the tip to trace the shape of his lips as they intertwined. When he heard the commotion on the other side of the room, Wei Wuxian commented, Hang Wang Zhu, Hang on, June, the you over there came. A sweat dressed Lan Zhen, a sweat, I'm sorry, I have so many thoughts. A sweat drenched, drenched Lan Zhen was holding an equally sweaty Wei Ying, and the two lay quietly on the now wrinkled mat. Wei Ying's chest was heaving, his eyes a little unfocused. They were still joined together. Wei Ying's lower body was still firmly gripped. Yet Wei Ying's lower body still firmly gripped Lan Zhen's member, and the cum that had been shot inside him was sealed in without a single drop leaking forth. Wei Wuxian chuckled. Do you think we should also? <laughs> Lan Wangji nodded and laid him flat on the mat. With a few steady rolls of his hips, he released inside Wei Wuxian. Wei Wuxian breathed a sigh of relief. While the pleasure of the act was real, his waist and his ass weren't forged of iron. His energy was almost depleted after going at it for so long alongside the two kids. But unexpectedly, Lan Wangxi didn't pull out. Instead, he readjusted Wei Wuxian's position while remaining inside. Wei Wuxian looked at him questioningly. Hang on, Jun? Lan Wangxi gave a slight smile in response and softly whispered a few words into his ear. Uh, wait, Wei Wuxian said. When I said fuck to death, I meant the little Lan Zhen in your, in your dream should fuck the me inside the dream to death. I didn't mean Lan Ergaga, mercy. And that's the scene break. That's where that, that's where that, oh my God, my, my head is full as is everything else in this scene. Oh my God. Okay. First of all, my apologies, my apologies. The second somebody, you know, rightfully tried to wave a content flag at me. Um, I really should have started asking questions rather than like, I just flinched for some reason and then, and this was, so I just, I apologize. That should have prompted me to ask more questions, not automatically arrive at a conclusion because things like this are so deeply like subjective and described differently by almost every like individual. So it really helps to get more of a consensus before making a decision, before making a decision based off of what one person says. That is my mistake. I have never like read anything uh, like this out loud before. We uh, are learning. So 
this is so deeply fascinating and like fucking leave it to MXTX to make a scene like this so fascinating on a character level, which is really what makes um, sex scenes and erotic scenes so good when there is something either to be really observed and analyzed about the character or something is going on with like the characters themselves and it really gets a relationship from A to B or what have you. In this case, I feel like this is a really good opportunity to, um, at least for me, I keep thinking about Lan Wangji um, and his... And like why he has uh, the rape fantasies that he has, um, that Wei Wuxian shares, of course. But the the emphasis being on Wang Ji and in general in this whole sequence, it really makes me think about why he has this particular fantasy. And it's really it's um it's a very interesting context and reasons for a person having that fantasy this is obviously a um highly controversial uh fantasy and kink to have it is deeply contested it is very polarizing and if it is absolutely not your thing it's not my thing either really um and like real life is what i mean um if that's like not your thing or if it's like a big trigger for you like i totally understand why discussions around this topic are like deeply sensitive because people can have really serious feelings about it um which is obviously to be respected so you know take care of yourself and nope out if and when like you need to um i'm of the uh, belief that basically the science and research has so far and that sexual fantasies the emphasis is on the fantasy part and they often bear either like little relation to uh, like regular things that go on in our brains and our actions and everything like that. Or at the very least, they bear a more like symbolic kind of more convoluted relation to like who we actually are as people. And that's a very common misconception, especially with rape non-con fantasies. Um, for understandable reasons. I always want to emphasize that. It is deeply understandable why this kink in particular is so controversial. And I totally understand that. Uh, but my view of it is, is that it's not about the non-con. It's about other things. And it can be about a variety of things. The reasons that people have the kinks that they have, sometimes it's very simple. Sometimes it's a bit more complex. Sometimes the person just couldn't tell you, or maybe even hasn't really thought about that. They're just like, I like this and that's why. I don't really know why, I just kind of do. Um, everyone's relationship to their own kinks and kink in general is incredibly personal. Speaking about Wang Ji, I think this type of fantasy for him makes so much character sense. Not surprising. This is MXTX we're talking about. This is a guy who throughout so many years of his life, well into his adult life, is so repressed by the rules that he grew up in, the society that he grew up in and also deeply by himself in accordance with the rules that he grew up in. Very rigid, very, and not to mention the whole homosexual aspect and falling in love with a man, right? And wanting to do things to this man, but being extremely fucking repressed. It's like, so his fantasy like completes the other side of the spectrum. Uh, he's incredibly repressed, feels very locked down, can't do anything no matter how much he wants to. And so his fantasy feeds into the opposite end where he gets to do whatever he wants, however hard he wants to, in whatever way he wants to, uh, to the object of his desire, regardless of anyone's, you know, uh, uh, concerns or consent or opinions on it, right? This makes sense to me. He is so deeply repressed. It's like, it's like Catholic the way he's depressed. That's how my American brain translates it. Um, 
he is that repressed and that um, ashamed by any kind of queer or sexual impulse. And so that flips in the sexual fantasy realm of his brain into like the other extreme of being able to do whatever he wants without shame, right? This makes total sense. What makes it even more like well-rounded to me in terms of when you're thinking about why Wang Ji has the fantasies that he does um, and how well executed it is. I love that at the end in the fantasy, it turns consensual, which just really completes the picture in my mind. It's like he wants to be able to be let off the leash to do whatever the fuck he wants to do to Wu Shan. But also at the end of the day, he is in love with Wu Shan and wants that deeply romantic consensual part as well. And in terms of a fantasy, you can have stuff like that happen, right? Even though knowing that obviously in reality, if we are talking about actual sexual assault and actual rape, that does not happen in the real world. It just, obviously, it's strictly a fantasy thing. Um, and one of the great things about fantasy is that literally we can have anything happen and it doesn't have to make sense or correlate with the real world at all. We can just have things happen in our brains and like, or our dreams and it's not happening in the real world. It's not applied to real world standards or anything like at all. So this makes total sense for me about Wang Ji. Um, I think it was also deftly approached and handled by mxtx who still now to this day has yet to disappoint me at all around things of consent and sexual fantasy and all of that jazz because <clears throat> notice how this very deliberately comes after we get you know their uh, uh their first love scene the first time Wei Bushan and Lan Wangji have actual sex that's not in a dream right and we already see their fantasies, their mutual fantasies on display. Um, I love that it's a mutual fantasy and that they both happen to have this uh, specific fantasy in common and they can really egg each other on in that way. Love that for them. That leads to a great sex life, right? Um, but then we also know Wei Wuxian's opinion on this kink and how he encourages it literally within the scene itself and uh, uh and also in the scene where they very first had sex during the whole wedding marriage thing what else what else oh and uh um we also very clearly and deliberately get an example of how it is purely of there's fantasy in lan wang ji's head and there's reality because when Lan Wangji, um, when he kisses Wei Wuxian, while Wei Wuxian is blindfolded and restrained and he kisses him, we very clearly see Lan Wangji feel intense guilt and shame about that for a variety of reasons. But we also know it is because he, in real life, no fantasy um, agreed upon, right? took that from Wei Wuxian and we see him experience that guilt. So we know that in this character's real life, right? That he's obviously not carrying over like his fantasy into real life and therefore in real life would never even remotely obviously be a, a rapist or take that from him in like an actual sense, right? It is all purely a fantasy and everything that happens between them and that has happened between them so far has been, you know, a dream. Lan Wang Jim has dreamed about this and they have witnessed this fantasy and gotten off on it because it's a fantasy that they both share. So it has very much still existed in um, a space of consent because that's how you do that. That's how you're supposed to do that. That's one of the cruxes of the rape fantasy and that's something uh, in, in that everything is happening is mutually agreed upon and fully consensual between the two parties, right? You are playing at a certain scenario um, and that is that is upheld throughout their interactions. And 
I very appre- very much appreciate that. It's a tough, tough um, needle to thread. And she has managed to definitely thread that needle. I would love an opportunity to examine Wei Wu Shan's side of things and why he has um, this fantasy. But like, as per usual, um, Len Wangji is a little bit more clear cut and easier to figure out. And Wei Wu Shan's a little bit more of a chaotic mess that's a little bit harder to pin down, no pun intended. Um, and that's how both of those characters were designed because it reflects their nature, right? Lan Wangji, very regimented, very, yes, you can, and, and in that way, she designed him to be somewhat easily, um, decoded, really. You can trace this motivation to this action and you can understand him very clearly and everything that he does. Whereas Wei Wushan takes a little bit more, like, guesswork and nuance, like, and, um, analysis in that sense to really make sense out of where he's coming from what he's feeling and why he does like the things he does and he's just a little bit more of a tangled up mess whereas Lan Wangji is pretty clear and regimented and I love that she designed them that way she designed the characters to therefore reflect the characters themselves like amazing love that and she went to a huge she went to great lengths she designed these guys from the ground fucking up to reflect certain things Wushan being the chaos and Lan Wangji being the order to greatly generalize things. Um, so I would love even more of an opportunity to kind of detangle all of, um, all of that within Wei Wushan. Um, but then again, maybe she's already, she's probably already given everything to me and I just need to like sit and think about it for a while. This is probably true as well. Um, but as far as Wang Ji goes, it's pretty clear to me. Um, and I find that's so interesting. It's really fascinating um, because you don't see, uh, for a variety of reasons that I've previously touched on, you know, you don't see stuff like this in American media, certainly, because that would uh, automatically come with, I mean, one of the things about discussing things like non-con and rape fantasies is that a lot of people, for very valid reasons, just kind of shut down and go into very black and white thinking about this kind of thing. Um, and that's not terribly productive for having a discussion and really understanding all the variety of ways and reasons that people have for having this kink, um, which is unfortunate. So you at least at this point in time, I feel like you can't really, it's difficult to have nuanced conversations about this kind of thing. And so you really don't see it in media or like indie media or books or self-published or what have you. Um, you do probably encounter this in fan fiction where you really deliberately have to seek it out in order to find it. Whereas that's not so much the case with, um, traditionally published books in the greater media. Uh, now we're kind of starting to see a little bit more specific trigger warnings, but um, when it comes to fan fiction, it's much more clearly defined for good reason. Um, is that it about my lecture thus far? We still have stuff to go. I'm sorry, that was a really long-winded thing, but like, so many thoughts, and I feel very silly for having a knee-jerk reaction and then jumping to a decision before I should have. I got a little bit ahead of myself. I apologize. Because, just because, I already explained. I don't need to explain it again. I just, but I, I, I apologize again. That was my bad. Uh. So, we're at the bottom of page 239. You probably know that, but here we are. The next morning, most unexpectedly, Wei Wuxian woke up earlier than Lan Wangji. His legs shook the entire day. They fished out the... Ooh. Taper? Tapir? Tape beer? Tape beer? Incense? Bur I would have to look that word up. They fished out the incense burner... Once more, and turned it over and over in their hands, flipping it this way and that. 
Wei dismantled it, then put it back together exactly as it came, but they were unable to uncover any hidden secrets. Wei Wuxian sat by the desk, his mind fixed on the problem at hand. There's nothing wrong with the incense, so it must be the burner for sure. <coughs> <coughs> what an incredible object. Immersion that strong is functionally the same as empathy. Your family's library pavilion has no record of this? Lan Wangji shook his head, which meant there really were no past records. That's all right, said Wei Wushan. The incense burner's effects have already worn off. We might as well put it away so no one touches it by mistake. If any masters in the art of device forging come around in the future, we can ask about it then. They both truly thought the effect of the incense burner had worn off. How could they have known things wouldn't go as they had in how could they have known things wouldn't go as they had as they had anticipated? That was not a difficult sentence, Brain. Deep in the night, after Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji had made love in the tranquility room as usual, every day is every day, they fell into slumber together. It didn't take long before Wei Wuxian opened his eyes and found himself lying under the magnolia tree outside the library pavilion. Oh my god, is she going to give me what I requested? Sunlight cascaded past the flowering branches and spilled upon his face. Wei Wuxian squinted, raising a hand to block out the sun as he slowly sat up. This time, Lan Wangji wasn't beside him. Wei Wuxian cupped a hand by his mouth and shouted, Lan Chen! Another reason why... An an another reason I will give a lot of credit to the way that MXDX is depicting um, these fantasies between these two uh, is because she makes sure to hit uh, crucial points of consent and enthusiasm from both sides. If Wei Wuxian had witnessed this dream of Lan Wangji's and like been made uncomfortable by it or anything like that or had been like uh -huh, then it would not even remotely be the same like vibe then you're getting into something else in murkier waters and she really went out of her way to make the point that they both have this fantasy they both enthusiastically have this fantasy and Wei Wuxian was totally down with this fantasy playing out to the point of climbing on top of dream that wangji um that was just another little stray thought that occurred to me where am i no one answered way we shan found this strange it seems the incense burner's effects haven't actually worn off yet but where did lanjan go am i the only one still feeling the residual effects in front of the magnolia tree was a small path made of white stones. A bunch of white-clad, forehead-ribbon-wearing Land Clan juniors passed by in groups of two or three, carrying books in their hands. It seemed they were on their way to morning lessons, and not one spared a single glance Wei Wuxian's way, for they still couldn't see him. Wei Wuxian went up to the library pavilion for a look, finding neither the big nor the little Lan Wangji inside. Thus he went back down the stairs and aimlessly roamed around the cloud recesses. Not long after, he caught the faint sound of two boys talking in hushed voices. When he approached, one of them sounded incredibly familiar. There has never been anyone who kept animals in the cloud recesses. To do so would be against the rules. After a brief silence, the other boy said in a sulky tone, I am aware. However, I have already made a promise. I will not go back on my word. Realization struck Wei Wuxian, and he secretly peered in on the conversation. Sure enough, two young men stood in a meadow exchanging words, and they were Lan Shi Chen and Lan Wang Ji. It was spring, and there was a gentle breeze. The young twin jades of Lan reflected each other like flawless examples of the stones for which they were named. Both wore plain robes as white as snow, and their expansive sleeves and forehead ribbons were a flutter in the wind. They looked like a painting. Indeed, they did. Those men, twin jades. I'm fine. It's fine. Oh, why you gotta bring my husband into this? The Lan Wangji of this time also seemed to be 15 or 16 years of age. His brow was slightly knitted, as though his mind was troubled. In his arms, he held a white rabbit that was twitching its pink nose. There was another white rabbit beside his feet, its long ears perked. It was standing on its hind legs and pawing at his boots, seeming to want to climb up. How could some joking comments between youths be considered a serious promise? Is that really the reason? Lan Wangji lowered his eyes and didn't speak. Lan Shi Chen chuckled. There is beautiful art that we will get to here in a second. Le Lan Shi Chen chuckled. All right. If Shifu asks, you will have to give him a proper explanation. 
You have spent a bit too much time on them of late. Lan Wangxi nodded solemnly. Thank you, Shang Zhang, he said, then added after a brief pause, This will not impact my studies. I know it will not, Wang Ji, Lan Chi Chen said. However, you must not tell Shifu who gave them to you. He would be furious and do all he could to make you send them away. At this warning, Lan Wangji seemed to hug the rabbit in his arms a little tighter. Lan Chi Chen smiled and reached out and tickled the white rabbit's nose before strolling away. Once he'd gone, Lan Wangji stood there contemplatively for a, for a while. The white rabbit in the crook of his arm looked perfectly relaxed, flicking its ears every so often. The one next to his feet was pawing with increasing urgency. Lan Wangji glanced at it, then bent down to pick it up as well, cradling both rabbits in his arms. He stroked them softly, the gentleness of his hands a stark contrast to the cold expression on his face. It was too tempting. Wei Wuxian walked out from behind the tree with the intent of getting closer to little Lan Wangji. To his surprise, Lan Wangji released both rabbits in his arms and whipped his head around, the aura around him changing drastically. When he saw who it was, however, he was taken aback. The stern glare had only lasted for an instant. You! He was shocked. Wei Wuxian was even more so. Are we going to... Sorry, sorry. Art, art. Hang on. I got My brain has to catch up with itself. Here, here. Look at this for a second, okay? Uh, be mesmerized by its beauty. Are we about to get what I think we're about to get? Is she about to... I'm fine. I'm fine. I need to shut up. I need to read. I need to read. You can see me? Asked Wei Wuxian, curious. Well, this was weird. A dream's inhabitants shouldn't be able to see him, as was logical. And yet Lan Wangji stared at him intently. Naturally, you are Wei Ying. The man before him looked over 20 years of age, definitely older than 15, but at the same time the face undoubtedly belonged to Wei Wuxian. Lan Wangji, having a hard time discerning the identity of this individual, was on high alert. If he'd been armed, Bi Chen would have probably been unsheathed by now. Reacting with great speed, Wei Wuxian composed himself. It's me! His response only made Lan Wangji more wary. He backed away from him. Lan Zhen, I went through hell and finally found you, said Wei Wuxian in a wounded tone. How can you treat me like this? You truly are Wei Ying? Lan Wangji asked. Of course. Then why is your appearance different? That's a long story, said Wei Wuxian. It's like this. I really am Wei Wuxian, but from seven years in the future. Seven years from now, I'll discover an incredible spiritual device that can transport a person back in time. I was examining it in detail when I accidentally knocked it, and so here I am. This explanation was so absurd that it was near infantile. How can you prove such a thing is true? demanded Lan Wangji coldly. How do you want me to prove it? Wei Wuxian asked. I know everything about you. Wasn't I the one who gave you the rabbit you were holding, as well as the one that was by your feet? You were so upset about taking them at the time, but now you're unhappy your Gugu won't let you keep them. Did they grow on you? Lin Wangji's expression changed a little at this. He was about to say something and then stopped. I... Wei Wuxian took a couple more steps toward him, arms wide open. You what? he asked with a gleeful grin. Feeling shy now? His strange action had Lan Wangji alarmed, as though he were about to face a great foe. He backed away farther. Wei Wuxian, who hadn't seen Lan Wangji act like this in a long time, wheezed inwardly, though he feigned anger. What's the meaning of this? Why are you backing away? Lan Zhen, you jerk, we've been married for ten years. Don't turn around and pretend you don't know me. Lan Wangji's handsome, icy countenance instantly cracked the moment he heard this. You, me, he said, unbelieving, ten years, married? His sentence broke to pieces before it even got out of his mouth. Oh my god, you're ending this poor- This is- Okay, no, this is- This is too much. This is, this is too much fun. <clears throat> Wei Bishan acted like something had just occurred to him. Oh, I forgot. You don't know that right now. Estimating the time, we've only just met, right? Have I left the cloud recesses? That's okay. I'll tell you a secret. In another few years, we'll become cultivation partners. Cultivation partners? Lan Wangji echoed. 
Yeah, Wei Wuxian replied, smugly. The kind that practices dual cultivation every day. Because it means every day. It was a formal and official wedding. We even did our three marriage vows. Lan Wangji was infuriated. His chest heaved slightly as he fumed, and it took him some time to squeeze a word through his gritted teeth. Nonsense. Let me tell you a few more things. You'll know I'm not talking nonsense, insisted Wei Wuxian. You like to hold me tight when you sleep, and I have to be on top of you, or you can't nod off. Every time you kiss me, it goes on nearly forever, and when it's over, you like to bite my lip before we part. Ooh, there's a detail. I'm gonna take a second while the mowing guys get past this part of the how to absorb. That's that's a detail I needed. Thank you, MXTX. <clears throat> Uh, oh, yeah, and you really like biting me in bed, too. Biting me while you do me. My body is covered with... The moment Wei Wuxian said, hold me tight, Lan Wangji looked like he couldn't bear to hear anymore. His expression only worsened as he continued. He looked like he desperately wished he could cover his own ears to block out such filthy language. Finally, he struck out with his hand. Nonsense! Wei Wuxian dodged the attack and taunted him. Nonsense again. Pick another word. Besides, how do you know if it's nonsense? Is that not how you kiss me? See, here's the thing about uh, here's the thing about Wushan, and about so many uh, subs and subby people. Um, they they live to provoke in order to get the heated and aggressive response that they desire. It's just. Endless, I just, I don't, I, I, I love that shit. I love that shit. So, like, of course, this is sending me. Um, ever the provocateur, Wei Wuxian. And I, I just had to take a second and be like, I love, I love that it does not matter if it's Dream Wangji or, like, present-day Dream Wangji, past Dream Wangji. Anytime he runs into Wang Ji, the first thing and only thing that he has to do is like, I'm going to get this boy so riled up that he fucks me as hard as possible. That is just his automatic programming. He, oh my God, I love it so much. I have never kissed you even once. How would I know what I like when I... How would I know what I like when I do that? Lan Wangji clenched out through his teeth. Wei Wuxian thought about it for a moment. That's true. You haven't even kissed me at this age. So of course you don't know what you like. Why don't you give it a try then, right now? This is the height of fantasy. Just the height. Lan Wangji was struck speechless. He was so angry he'd forgotten even to summon sect disciples to arrest this suspicious individual. He struck out without hesitation, going straight for the vital points on Wei Wuxian's inner wrists each time. Alas, he was simply too young. Wei Wuxian moved faster than him and easily dodged his every attack, all while appearing quite at ease. He waited for an opening, then pinched a point on Lan Wangji's arm. Lan Wangji faltered and Wei Wuxian seized the opportunity to plant a kiss on his cheek. Lan Wangji was dumbstruck. Wei Wuxian loosened his grip on Lan Wangji's arm after committing the deed, releasing him. But Lan Wangji stood stunned in place, unable to pull himself back together for the longest time. He'd been struck entirely speechless. Wei Wuxian woke up from the dream, laughing. Aw, oh, damn. He was laughing so hard, he almost fell off the bed. Thankfully, Lan Wangji's arm was always locked firmly around his waist. Wei Wuxian's body continued to shake with laughter even now that he was awake, which roused Lan Wangji from his slumber as well. The two sat up. Lan Wangji bowed his head and raised a hand to gently rub his temple. Just now, I... Did you have a dream just now? A dream where a 15-year-old you met a 20-something me? Wei Wuxian finished for him. Lan Wangji stared straight at him. It was the incense burner. Wei Wuxian nodded. At first, I thought I'd entered that dream because the incense burner's residual effects were hitting me harder. Who would have thought that you were the one worst affected? What had happened tonight was different from last time. The young Lan Jen in the dreamscape was actually Lan Wangji himself. A dreamer is not often aware they are dreaming, and thus Lan Wangji genuinely thought he was only 15 years old while in the dream. It was a perfectly respectable dream. A morning lesson, taking a walk, raising rabbits, 
and yet it was crashed by Wei Wuxian, who had infiltrated it and given him a good round of teasing after catching him. Does that not sum up their entire existence? Ignore the lawnmower. I can't, Lan Jan, Wei Wuxian continued. The way you were holding that rabbit, refusing to let it go, scared that your Gaga and your Shufu wouldn't let you keep them. Man, I love it. The hour is late, Lan Wangji chided helplessly. Do not disturb others with your laughter. As if our nightly disturbances are quiet, Wei Wuxian countered. Why did you wake up so quickly? You should have stayed asleep a little longer so I could drag you to the back mountain to do naughty stuff. Give Lander Giga a little introduction. Lan Wangji watched him roll around next to him, but ultimately didn't respond. He sat there for a long time, poised and unmoving, before he suddenly reached out and pinned Wei Wuxian to the bed, bearing down on him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The two had thought the power of the incense burner would have dispersed after the second night, but unexpectedly, Wei Wuxian woke up in Lan Wangji's dream again on the third night. Dressed all in black, he strolled leisurely down the small white stone paths of the cloud recesses. Chen Qing's red tassel swayed with each step. It didn't take long before the clear, sonorous sound of recitation came drifting through the air. The voices came from the direction of the orchid room, Wei Wuxian sauntered over. As expected, there were many Lan Clan disciples inside for their evening lesson. Lan Shi Ren wasn't around. The one on supervisory duty was Lan Wangji. Lan Wangji was still youthful in tonight's dream, but looked to be around 17 or 18, the same age he'd been when Wei Wuxian encountered him inside the cave of the Shranmu of Slaughter. His features were handsome and his demeanor elegant. He already had the grace of a distinguished cultivator, though there was still a trace of youthful inexperience. He sat poised at the front of the hall and looked to be concentrating on something. Whenever someone approached him with a question about their studies, he provided an answer with only a simple glance at the text. His stern expression was a powerful contrast to his youthful immaturity. Wei Wuxian leaned against a pillar outside the orchid room and watched for a while before he soundlessly leapt onto the roof's eaves and placed Chen Qing to his lips. Inside the orchid room, Lan Wangji paused. What is it, Gongji? asked one of the boys. Who is playing the flute now? Lan Wangji questioned. The boys traded looks of dismay. One of them slowly stated, We do not hear the sound of a flute. Lan Wangji's expression turned slightly hard at this and he rose to his feet. Just as he left through the door with his sword in hand, Wei Wuxian tucked away his flute and leapt swiftly onto another part of the roof. Lan Wangji detected the unusual movement. Who goes there? He barked in a low voice. Two clear and far-reaching whistling noises rolled from Wei Wuxian's tongue. He was already dozens of meters away as he yelled with a laugh, Your husband! <laughs> Lan Wangji's face changed at the sound of his voice. Wei Ying? He asked, uncertain. Wei Wuxian didn't answer. Lan Wangji drew Pi Chen from his back and chased after him. After many leaps and bounds, Wei Wuxian had already landed on the very tall enclosure wall of the cloud recesses, straightening up to stand atop the black tiles, when Lan Wangji landed just five meters from him, wielding Bi Chen. His forehead ribbon, his sleeves, and the hems of his robes flapped in the night breeze. A sharp, transcendent air surrounded him. Wei Wuxian grinned. What handsome moves! What a handsome man! This scene matched with this view. If only there were a handsome jug of Emperor's smile, then everything would be perfect. Oh my god, not first fight vibes. Oh, take me all the way back to the beginning. Lan Wangji stared at him intently and said after a moment, Wei Ying, might I inquire as to what you're doing here, visiting the cloud recesses uninvited at this late hour? Guess, Wei Wuxian asked. <sighs> "'Nonsensical!' exclaimed Lan Wangji. Wei Wuxian easily dodged Bi Chen's approaching tip. While Lan Wangji was already an excellent fighter at age 17 or 18, he was still unable to pose much of a threat to present-day Wei Wuxian. It only took a brief exchange of blows for Wei Wuxian to spot an opening and slap a talisman on Lan Wangji's chest. Lan Wangji froze in place, unable to move. Wei Wuxian seized him and dashed to the back reaches of the cloud recesses mountain with, with him in his arms. He found a thicket of... 
Eupatorium grass and settled Lan Wangji here, leaning him against a white rock. What are you doing? Lan Wangji demanded. Wei Wuxian pinched his cheek. Ha, rape, he replied in a serious tone. Lan Wangji blanched, unable to tell if he was joking. Wei Ying, he said in warning, you cannot mess around. Wei Wuxian laughed. You know me. I like messing around. He reached his hand inside Lan Wangji's many layers of firmly tucked white robes and gave the most notable, par notable part of his anatomy a squeeze. The squeeze was delivered with extreme skill. The pressure was just right. Lan Wangji's expression turned odd in an instant. The corners of his lips twitched and he pursed his lips tightly. At last he reined in his expression and effected a forced calm. Unexpectedly, Wei Wuxian took the inch for a mile, untying his sash and stripping off his trousers in a few quick motions. He appraised the heavy cock that was so at odds with Lan Wangji's otherwise delicately handsome features and offered the most heartfelt praise. Heng Wanjun, you really have been naturally well endowed from a very young age. He then lightly flicked the shaft. Lan Wangji looked as if he was about to spit blood and die from fury at the very idea that someone would toy with his privates in such a way. He didn't even have the mind to wonder who Hang Wanjun was. Wei Ying, he barked. Go on, yell to your heart's content. No one will come save you, even if you scream yourself hoarse, Wei Wuxian said gleefully. Right? This is like... Are we sure we're in Lan Wangji's dream and not like Wei Wuxian's? Because, oh my god, if this isn't like the epitome of this boy's fantasy. Lan Wangji was going to say more, but after the laughter ceased, he saw Wei Wuxian tuck a loose strand of hair behind his ear and bury his head in Lan Wangji's crotch to take his cock into his mouth. Shock filled Lan Wangji's eyes. He couldn't believe this. His whole body went stiff. A 17 or 18 year old Lan Wangji still had the air of youth, but the size of his cock was not to be dismissed, as we have emphasized. Wei Wuxian slowly took it into his mouth, but he felt the slick head hit the back of his throat before he could swallow the whole length of it. I knew it. The shaft was thick and hot. He could feel it throb in his throat, and his cheeks were stuffed to fullness with the foreign object. His jaw is going to hate him when he wakes up, if that even matters in Dream World, actually. Difficult as it was to swallow, he remained patient, taking the last stretch of it down to deeper depths. Wei Wuxian had, cons had considerable practice when it came to the subject of Lan Wangxi's cock. I mean, every day is every day. He unleashed all his tricks, loudly sucking and licking and slurping like he was focused on savoring a gourmet delicacy. Even though Lan Wangji's snow white face showed no blush, he was flushed from his ears down to his neck, and his breathing quickened. Wei Wuxian took him in and out of his mouth for a good while, but though his cheeks were sore from sucking, there was still no release. He was quite confused. There was no way his mouth couldn't satisfy 17-year-old Lan Wangji. He stole an upward glance and saw Lan Wangji working hard to endure his ministrations. His cock was clearly hard as iron, but he was holding himself back by sheer force of will, as if he were trying to protect some vital principle. What I say, what I say, Wang Ji in general is so fucking repress. I already, I already went there. I already said it. She just, um, she just illustrated it beautifully. Ha! <sighs> Hang on, sorry, my vindication hit me so hard that I totally missed. I totally knocked myself off track. Where, where? There we go. Amused by this, Wei Wuxian felt the desire to prank him sprout within him once more. He licked the slit on the head of his massive cock repeatedly with his wet tongue and took him deep into his throat a few more times. Finally, Lan Wangji could endure it no longer and came. The sp mm. Bodily fluids. The spurts of cum were thick, filling his throat with musk. Wei Wuxian straightened up, lightly cleared his throat a few times, and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Swallowing the cum completely, just as he'd always done. The rims of Lan Wangji's eyes were red, whether because of his body's reaction to climaxing or simply his deep embarrassment. He glared hard at Wei Wuxian without saying a word. He looked like he couldn't endure another moment of this humiliation. Wei Wuxian's heart melted at the sight. He left a light kiss on his cheek. All right, he said consolingly. I was wrong. I shouldn't have bullied you. 
As he spoke, he used two fingers to wipe Lan Wangji's softening cock, then retracted his hand and untied his own sash to remove his lower garments. Wei Wuxian's leg were, legs were long and slender, and his thighs fair and luminous as jade, with graceful, powerful contours. His buttocks were perky, round and full, quite a sight to behold. If we are... Well, no, okay, we haven't mentioned Wuxian's ass nearly as much as we've mentioned Lan Wangji's. Uh, dick, but I feel like that's the we're either talking about Lan Wangji's cock or we're talking about Wei Wuxian's ass. I feel like these are the two things that they appreciate about each other. You know what I mean? Lan Wangji, still leaning against the white rock, just so happened to be angled to receive the perfect view of the hidden spot between Wei Wuxian's cheeks. Wei Wuxian knelt in the thicket of Eupatorium grass and sprawled on all fours with his back to Lan Wangji. He... Bodily... He moved his you know, smeared fingers. It's on his... You know what I mean. Uh, lower. The secret cave of Xuan Wu of Slaughter was hidden within the dark crevice of his ass, the tiny pink spot only glimpsed when he spread his cheeks a little. The entrance was soft, demure, and primly shut tight at first, but when Wei Wuxian gently administered Lan Wang the lubricant um, with his long fingers, it opened a little too shyly to swallow. It opened a little too shyly. It opened a little to shyly swallow. Emphasis syllable. His fingertips. Wei Wuxian slowly but firmly pushed his fingers all the way inside, thrusting in and out. He did this for a while, slowly increasing the speed of his thrusting, and his cock gradually began to harden. When the sounds turned wet, Wei Wuxian added a third finger. He panted lightly, as though he was reaching his limit. He slowed the pace of the fucking to what he could take. In the dark of the night, it shouldn't have been easy to see every detail. But of course, all five of Lan Wangji's senses just had to be keen, especially his sight. He watched as this ridiculously obscene act played out just inches from him, unable to pull his eyes away. When it came to making love, Wei Wuxian liked reaching climax together with Lan Wangji. To avoid coming too soon, he purposely avoided the most sensitive spot inside of him as he stretched himself out. But Lan Wangji had always taken such good care of that place that his body clenched particularly hard when it wasn't attended to, sucking inward again and again as if displeased. When his fingers didn't touch that spot, his hips would unconsciously dip and deliver it to his fingers. Having brushed dangerously close to the spot many times, Wei Wuxian's inner thighs were weak and trembling. I can only fucking imagine what is going on in Dream Wangji's head right now. Uh, he nearly fell out of his crouching position. He quickly withdrew his fingers to cool himself down for a moment. He turned his head and locked eyes with Lan Wangji without warning. Lan Wangji immediately closed his eyes. Hey, Lan Zhen, what are you doing? Reciting the Lan family precepts in your head, Wei Wuxian laughed. He'd hit the nail on the head. Lan Wangji's lashes quivered. He seemed to want to open his eyes, but managed to resist the urge in the end. Come on, Wei Wuxian beckoned in a languid tone. Look at me. What are you afraid of? It's not like I'll do bad things to you. His voice had always been pleasant to the ears. When he drawled those words, it was like a playful little hook with bait attached. However, Lan Wangji seemed determined not to look, to listen, or to speak. He was determined to remain unmoved. Unmoved. Um, not to look, to listen, or to speak. As in... See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil? I see you. MXDX. Will you really be so stone-hearted as to not even look at me? Asked Wei Wuxian. No matter how he coaxed and cajoled, Lan Wangji refused to open his eyes. Wei Wuxian arched his brows. If that's the case, mind if I borrow Bi Chen for a little bit? Excuse me? True to his word, he grabbed the recently discarded Bi Chen off the ground. Lan Wangji's eyes flew open at once. What are you going to do? He barked sharply. What do you think? I do not know. Why are you so nervous if you don't know what I'm about to do? I... Wei Wuxian looked at him, grinning, and waved Bi Chen in his hand. Then he lowered his gaze and dropped a light kiss to Bi Chen's hilt. Uh-huh. 
Uh huh. What followed was a glimpse of vibrantly red tongue as he began to carefully lick the hilt. Beechen's blade was like ice and snow, translucent and crystalline. Its hilt was forged of pure silver using a secret method. It was exceptionally heavy. Its carvings dignified and ancient in design. It presented a wicked and bewitching sight. Like he'd been set ablaze, Lan Wangji exclaimed, Let go of Bichen. Why? Wei Wuxian asked. That is my sword, said Lan Wangji. You can't use it to... I know it's yours, said Wei Wuxian in an inquisitive tone. I just sort of like it. It's always playing with it. What did you think I was going to do? Lan Wangji was momentarily stumped. Wei Wuxian hugged his middle and laughed. Lan Chan, what were you thinking? How perverted. Having his accusation not just denied, but turned back on him, Lan Wangji's face flushed a thrilling array of colors. Wei Wuxian teased him to his heart's content before he said, If you want me to not touch your sword, then swap it for yourself. How's that? Okay? Lan Wangji couldn't say, okay, nor could he allow Wei Wuxian to profane his sword. He was stumped, unable to answer. Wei Wuxian knelt in front of him, his back as straight as a brush, then shuffled over on his knees and straddled him. Give me the okay and I'll return your sword, he coaxed. Then you and I can do fun things together, okay? It took Lan Wangji some time before a word escaped through his gritted teeth. No. Wei Wuxian quirked an eyebrow. Okay, you said it. He backed down from his position atop Lan Wangji and sat in front of him. Snickering, he opened his legs. Watch me and Bi Chen play, then. With his legs splayed wide in such an utterly shameless position, Lan Wangji had a full view of Wei Wuxian's lower body. Two fair cheeks spread from his open legs, revealing the hidden pink hole. Its rim was already slightly red and swollen from his earlier ministrations, and the dampness made it appear even more tender. It's this level of detail about sphincters that, once again, I'm just not personally into. Neither am I personally into what's specifically about to happen, but I'm more neutral about what's about to happen, really. Wei Wuxian turned Bi Chen around and aimed the hilt toward his entrance. He drew in a small breath, then pushed. The delicate folds were instantly stretched. The end of Bi Chen's hilt was pulled in, and nearly half of it entered at once. Bi Chen's hilt was as icy as a piece of unyielding iron, and Wei Wuxian shuddered at the temperature. The flexing of his insides grew more intense from the cold, and a small stretch of the hilt slid out. He promptly gripped the sword and pushed it in harder, slowly fucking himself with it. His inner walls wrapped around, wrapped tight around the hilt, which was engraved with exquisite ancient patterns that raised and dipped. MXTX, you're fucking diabolical. The feeling of it bumping his inner walls was fit to drive him insane. When it rubbed a certain spot, Wei Wuxian let out a quiet moan and drew his legs together a little. A wave of vertigo and tingling tumbled from his head down his spine, and his cock stirred, standing tall and erect. I mean, we knew that that would... Anyway. From Lan Wangji's perspective, the sight was obscene beyond measure. Wei Wuxian, lying in front of him with his legs wide open, his ass taking Bi Chen. The hilt of the sword was hard and cold, and the tender entrance was almost pitifully red and swollen from being fucked so hard. Even so, Wei Wuxian kept going, moving it in and out, faster and faster, until he was fucking himself, himself smoothly along its length. He gazed at him with damp eyes, panting softly. Ooh, Lanjan, he called. Lanjan. See, Wei Wuxian, he, he just, he plays dirty, man. He plays so dirty, and he does it so well. It is, it is. His nasal voice seemed to plead with him. Or perhaps the words had simply been slurred out in the throes of passion. Whatever the case, it was enough to enrapture a man and make him lose himself. Any regular man, let alone fucking Lan Wangji. Lan Wangji had no way to close his eyes or look away. He stared intently at Wei Wuxian's face like he'd been bewitched. Stared as he struggled and twisted under Bi Chen's assault. He watched, knuckles white and cracking, as Wei Wuxian fucked himself to a trembling mess. Wei Wuxian was unaware of the change, as Bi Chen was giving him a hell of a time. He, his legs kept closing of their own volition, firmly pushing the hilt inside him as his cheeks pressed closed. As the hilt was pulled in deeper, Wei Wuxian exhaled deeply, feeling his arms and legs going weak. 
he lay down on his side and with the intent to take a short he wait he lay down on his side with the intent to take a short break but something suddenly seized the bend of his knees Wei Wuxian found his legs forced open once more, captured in a grip as strong as iron shackles. Wei Wuxian opened his eyes and met Lan Wangji's gaze squarely. His eyes were terrifyingly bloodshot, filled with an unknown flame. No, I think we know what the flame is at this point. He grabbed Bi Chen and pulled it out, flinging it far away. Wei Wuxian moaned as the hilt left his body, as though displeased by the loss. Shameless, Lan Wangji bellowed furiously. He crushed Wei Wuxian to the ground and shoved inside him with his, with his furious cock so hard it was flushed a deep red. What does this remind me of? Um, have you ever seen the movie Secretary? It's from 2002. It had James Spader, Maggie Gyllenhaal. It's a terrific little quirky, weird indie rom-com. Rom -com. That features some kink. Uh, nothing uh, non-con kink related. But um, it features, like, plenty of kink. Um, and uh, uh, James Spader's character, who is, he is extremely, he is of the uptight kind of OCD, uh, everything must be in its proper place kind of thing. Um, but messiness and, like, accidents, uh, things that cannot be controlled, when his controlled um world is broken in that way and some messiness and chaos is introduced that is what makes him horny that's what gets him off that's what and so maggie gyllenhaal's character being the sub in this situation can therefore knows exactly how to prod him in order to get the response that she desires, which is part of a classic um, dom and sub relationship, right? And that's what that's what this reminds me of. Um, it's something that, because in both cases, it's something that they're both so intellectually speaking, like rigidly, like against being provoked uh, um, directly, and the provocation of that is a turn on. Even though you would think that if you like care so much about, in James Spader's example, if you care so much about order and everything, then having, um, and like perfection in a way, having that violated would then make you angry, right? Or frustrated, it would just, it would piss you off, it would not like elicit like any kind of positive emotion. But in their cases, that's what gets them horny. It's a very, it's just, it's really interesting to me because I don't think I have anything like that um, personally. Something that's supposed to, um, something that you would think would just piss you off but actually just kind of like turns you on. I don't think I have that personally. Um, so it's really interesting to encounter characters or talk to people who very much have that thing where instead of getting mad, you just kind of get hard over it at the very least when it's the right person doing the, you know, another tangent. I'm so sorry. <coughs> um, once fully sheathed, sheathed sword. I get it. He began to pound Wei Wuxian without a moment's pause. And I mean, considering that Wei Wuxian has essentially been, like, begging for it um, this whole time. When Lan Wangji entered him, Wei Wuxian's legs automatically wrapped themselves around his waist. He wound his arms around his neck most agreeably, putting himself in a position to cater to him. But after taking a few thrusts, he felt he couldn't take any more. Lan Wangji's movements were too rough, and every motion felt like it sent him flying from the impact. He was so deep inside that Wei Wuxian's ass cheek and tailbone ached. Lighter, Wei Wuxian shouted, Urgaga, go easy. He had forgotten he was older than Lan Wangji in this dream, and that was his downfall. When he blurted out Urgaga, not only did Lan Wangji not restrain himself, he pounded harder, as though his sole purpose in life was to split Wei Wuxian's buttocks into eight pieces in retribution. Wei Wuxian threw his head back and drew a labored breath in the thick of the thrashing, storm like battering. So hot. Disaster. Wei Wuxian. Disaster. Just disaster. 
He's like, oh no, I've encouraged him too much. It's terrible. Bi Chen emanated coldness. When the hilt had been seated inside him, it left Wei Wuxian's inside soft but slightly chilled. Lan Wangji's cock was thicker and hotter, and so every time he drove in, it was like a ball of fire blazing through Wei Wuxian's abdomen. Oh, that's true. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Burning so hot that it made him want to roll across the ground. Stop, drop, and roll. That's so funny. But his body had gone limp and malleable thanks to how thoroughly he played with himself, and now thanks to Lan Wangji's roughness. All he could do was shiver through Lan Wangji's lashing. No matter how much higher his cultivation may have been, he had no way to retaliate. When he couldn't take the heat any longer, he tried to squirm away incessantly, rolling his hips in an attempt to escape. Lan Wangji only pinned him by the waist and drove deeper, slamming the voice out of him. Lan Wangji growled in his ear, Who is the husband? Oh... Wei Wuxian was still dazed and confused, so Lan Wangji repeated the question, punctuated with the with a thrust so hard that Wei Wuxian's body and soul were both almost sent flying to the heavens. Of course he wouldn't know. Duh. You, you, he quickly answered. It's you. You're the husband. He'd brought it on himself. To horrible, horrible results. This is just, this is terrible. He clenched his teeth and suffered another round of fucking without complaint. As his frozen insides were warmed by the grinding, he gradually began to feel better. The head of Lan Wangji's cock was well-defined and fucked him with wild abandon. Wei Wuxian's insides were wet and slick and drew him in with unceasing entanglement. Lan Wangji's cock was also slightly curved at the end, which let it rub Wei Wuxian's most sensitive spots again and again. I mean, it's the same as, you know... It felt so good that Wei Wuxian was on the verge of losing his mind, and yet he couldn't help but put on a feeble act, as if he couldn't endure being fucked so hard. You see what I mean? He loves, loves playing the damsel. It's so just... I, it's, it's so satisfying. Uh, he caught Lan Wangji's arms and cried pitifully as he rocked up and down with Lan Wangji's powerful thrust. Urgaga, Lan Jen, go easier, won't you? This hurts. I think I'm bleeding. It certainly was slick where the two were joined, and the wet squelching grew louder. Lan Wangji immediately looked down between them and was slightly taken aback. Wei Wuxian humped. Am I bleeding? He whined. Lan Wangji breathed out harshly. No. No? Then what is it? Wei Wuxian asked. You're wet, said Lan Wangji in a low voice. Can you imagine hearing Lan Wangji? Root, root, root. Although he hadn't noticed until now, Wei Wuxian's inner thighs were drenched. Lan Wangji's hard, flushed cock was also glistening. The wetness could only have come from Wei Wuxian's body. Really? Really? Wei Wuxian asked. Feigning disbelief, he caught Lan Wangji's hand and brought it to touch where they were joined. Lan Wangji's cock was thick, strong, and lined with throbbing veins, stretching Wei Wuxian's narrow entrance to its limit. Lan Wangji felt the slippery wetness and the spot where they came together. His hand recoiled as if he'd been pricked by a needle, but when he looked down, the fluid was clear. It wasn't blood after all. Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji's bodies matched perfectly, and in the thick of passion, their bodies reacted naturally as well. Wei Wuxian had been trying to tease him. Seeing the hint of a grin, Lan Wangji knew he'd been deceived. But he put his head down and renewed his attack. Um, what was the... Oh, that's what a... Um, that was the thought I had. Um, I am familiar with anal, but is this amount of wetness like dream lubrication or are there some bodies that actually do maybe not to this extent but are there some bodies that actually do produce that this is an anatomy question i should probably look that up later breath broken by the next round of thrusts way we shan quickly cut in lan Jen, let me top let me be on top okay Lan Wangji hesitated, as though he didn't understand what top meant. Holding on to him, Wei Wuxian flipped them around with great effort, reversing their positions. 
Now Lan Wangji lay on the ground while Wei Wuxian straddled him, ass and crotch still tightly joined. That hawk, that I just joined, hot and cock, my bad. That hot, thick cock remained buried deep inside Wei Wuxian without a moment of separation. It subtly rubbed Wei Wuxian's insides during the switch. He scrunched his eyes in contentment from the sensation, lost in a daze once more. He looked down. Though it might have been his imagination, he kept thinking his flat abdomen was slightly distended by Lan Wangji's cock. I've never really been into this that much either. The whole distended, you can see it thing. I've never really been into that either. He, uh, he couldn't help but feel his own belly, but didn't touch it for long before Lan Wangji grabbed his ass and forced him to move again. Wei Wuxian rose up and down with the force of Lan Wangji's grip. When he rose, only the hard-to-find head would remain in his body. When he sank back down, he would take his cock to the deepest depths of him, so deep that his brows knit together in concentration. The up and down was extremely fast, leaving almost no time to breathe. You're going to pass out. Except not in Dreamland. That would be the benefit of Dreamland. Wei Wuxian riding Lan Wangji was always one of their favorite positions when having sex, if only because it allowed for the deepest penetration, right? Which Wei Wuxian loved. As it turned out, there could be too much of a good thing. Lan Wangji was penetrating him a bit too deeply. The young 17-year-old Lan Wangji in this dream had been tantalized to the point of madness and couldn't control his strength at all. Wei Wuxian was being fucked until his legs trembled and he couldn't stand up, much less find the energy to struggle free. He was in a terrible plight. All he could do was brace himself with both hands on Lan Wangji's firm abdomen and take shaky breaths. This is a recurring thing with Wu Shan. He really, really loves being um, driven past just this side of uh, comfort. He really likes kind of dipping into the other side of some genuine discomfort when uh when when sex is involved he likes um it doesn't strike me as like limit pushing um it's not i feel like it's not like he wants to increase his limits he just he just genuinely like wants to experience the intensity even to the point of discomfort I hope I worded that correctly. But I've noticed that. This has happened more than once. Um, he provokes and he provokes and he provokes. And then it goes a little bit too far. And he gets like a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, and has like a little bit of like genuine um, discomfort going on. And that's like, but that's like exactly what he wants. That probably speaks, speaks a lot to just his general life of provocation. Actually, it really does. Um, where the hell was I? Yeah. Wei Wuxian was born with a thin waist and narrow hips, but his ass cheeks were plenty meaty. Here we go with the ass again. Lan Wangji sank his fingers deeply into his skin and kneaded with powerful force. Oh my god, you did that in the other bruising him all over in no time at all. The kneading made Wei Wuxian itch all over. His ass hurt, and he couldn't help but pry off one of the hands. Unexpectedly, Lan Wangji seemed deeply upset by having his hand removed. His brows knitted and his expression darkened. With one loud clap, Wei Wuxian's ass was brutally spanked. The sound of the slap was clear and crisp. Wei Wuxian was instantly stunned by the strike. Now we're getting into my territory. Not many people in his life had hit him there. Even when he was little and mischievous and Madame Yu punished him with the whip, he'd only ever been lashed on his back and palms. Zheng Fengmin and Zheng Yanli, Yanli couldn't bear to hit him at all. When Wei Wuxian saw other children spanked for being naughty, he thought it shameful and humiliating and was proud of the fact he'd never been subjected to it. Yet now Lan Wangji had gone and broken his streak. A 17-year-old Lan Wangji to boot, in a dreamland, no less. Wei Wuxian's face alternated between flushing and blanching. For the first time he'd experienced during sex, he discovered an irrepressible sense of shame surfacing within him. The more he dwelled on it, the more he couldn't bear the thought. One of his ass cheeks was, ass cheeks was still stinging. 
Stop, I'm not doing this anymore, he cried hastily. Then he rolled to the side and off of Lan Wangji. Dragging his two, weeks leg two weak legs behind him, he tried crawling away to go find his trousers. Unfortunately, we all know what happens when Lan Wangji uh, gets worked up like this. And they are, in fact, in dreamland. They are not operating by real life procedure. I already read the sex had Lan Wangji all worked up. Did I? No. Well, I just did anyway. An unspeakable fire had been suppressed in his chest for a good while. Earlier, Wei Wuxian had squeezed and pinched and flicked him, kissing and touching and threateningly teasing him. Now that he'd suddenly discovered that Wei Wuxian was particularly scared of being spanked, why would he let this go? With a casual wave of his hand, the trousers Wei Wuxian had just tugged up to his knees were instantly shredded to pieces. Lan Wangji flipped him over and seized both his wrists with one hand, locking them behind his back. The other gave Wei Wuxian's snow-white ass another hard spank. Wei Wuxian's whole body jerked from the strike, and he cried pitifully. It didn't actually hurt. It was just extremely, unbearably embarrassing. Wei Wuxian never tried to suppress his moans during sex, so his voice always wound up raspy at the halfway point. His cry, therefore, didn't sound like one of pain. It sounded a bit like a sweet moan instead. Lan Wangji paused at the sound. His gaze lowered. Beneath his hand were two plush... You know, we've been focusing on the ass the entire time. NXTX. I swear to fucking God. I swear to God. We've been focused on his on Wei Wuxian's ass the whole time, and then now comes a uh, significant moment involving fucking spanking. I'm not talking to her. His two slaps had left a light blush coloring the fair skin, which was crisscrossed with all manner of violent fingerprints. Thanks to all this rough treatment, the cheeks were slightly parted, and Wei Wuxian's timidly contracting entrance peeked between them now even more delicately tender and flushed it was a wonder how it had managed to swallow both beach and silt and this terrifyingly massive cock take a shot slickness still flowed wildly around the summit of wei wuxian's cheeks as well as his inner thighs lan wangji's eyes grew increasingly dark at the sight of it yeah as for the restrained wei wuxian scared that he'd be spanked again he quickly clenched his ass and made the small hole open and close to distract <laughs> Lan Wangji in hopes that he would return to business instead instead of business instead of delivering another lash to his rear. Why is that a hilarious mental image? Sure enough, Lan Wangji's breath turned harsh. He flipped Wei Wuxian over, penetrating him anew. The entry was incredibly smooth. Having been filled to fullness again, Wei Wuxian sighed a breath of relief. Yet before he could fully exhale, Lan Wangji struck out again, slapping his ass. Wei Wuxian shuddered from the strike, and his hole unconsciously squeezed as well, which caused the head of Lan Wangji's uh, cock to bump his most sensitive spot. Wei Wuxian's cock grew harder, trickling with pre -cum. After that, Lan Wangji began to spank him on the hip with every thrust, so Wei Wuxian's insides would squeeze the hardest when the head of Lan Wangji's cock hit the most crucial point. His own cock stood higher and higher. The three overslap overslapping, the three overlapping sensations made him feel like he was being tossed by surging waves. Don't be like this, he whimpered. Lan Jen, stop! Don't spank me anymore. Wake up, Lan Jen! Wake up! He knew Lan Wangji had always been inclined to roughness during sex, and Wei Wuxian had always enjoyed being roughed up, but he'd never been pushed to the edge like this. We have seen him, again, the comfort discomfort, we'd seen him being pushed over into edges of discomfort like this, but now we're seeing what happens when he really um, is pushed out into the wild blue yonder, which is something that happens, and why you have safe words in, when, I mean, dreamland, but um, why you have safe words, but I'll, this is, this is really interesting, hang on, breathe, whole context, keep Reading. He knew Lan Wangji had always been inclined to. Uh, having been spanked a dozen times, Wei Wuxian's perfectly fine ass was beaten red, hot, and slightly swollen. Uh, it stung. 
it stung so much. There's supposed to be a so right there. That's a translation thing. It stung so much he couldn't bear to be touched, and the rest of his body grew increasingly sensitive in turn. When Lan Wangji pushed into the deepest part of him once more and leaned down, he leaned down and captured his lips. Sapped of energy, Wei Wuxian hugged his shoulders tight and deepened the kiss. He reached his climax at the point of exhaustion. Also notice that he didn't spank him again. After really saying, stop, don't spank me anymore. Like, wake up, Lan Zhen, wake up. So, to me, that says he's delivering it in, like, a genuine way. As opposed to the tone of, like, oh, no, this is terrible. Lan Wangji, stop. Oh, Lan Wangji, stop. Like, that whole thing. Um, which Wangji would pick up on. But notice, he doesn't spank him again after that. Fine line. He reached his climax at the point of exhaustion. Did I read that? I just did. <clears throat> a streak of milky white splashed both of their abdomens. Following close behind, Lan Wangji spilled inside him abundantly. Wei Wuxian held him quietly for a bit before complaining with a raspy voice. Ow. Lan Wangji seemed to have regained some calm and some sense after the second climax. Where does it hurt, he asked, standing somewhat at a loss for what to do. His weight was still crushing him. It wasn't like Wei Wuxian could say, my ass. So after, I mean, because that kind of, like, of course, too vague. So after a pause, he said instead, voice low, Lan Zhen, quickly, kiss me. His downcast eyes and unusually demure manner had Lan Wangji's earlobes turning pink. He held him as tight as he had requested and captured his lips, kissing him with the utmost care. When they parted, Lan Wangji did indeed nip Wei Wuxian's lip, and then the two woke up. Okay, even in the dream we're getting a little bit of aftercare. Lying there on the wooden bed and inside the tranquility room, the two of them stared at each other for a moment before Lan Wangji pulled Wei Wuxian into his arms once more. After being kissed in his embrace for a long time, Wei Wuxian seemed quite sati satiated, if bleary-eyed. Lan Zhan, I've got a question for you. You come inside me every time. Is that because you want me to bear a little Lan Gongji for you? In the dream, his teasing had failed, and he'd been fucked within an inch of his life. His teasing had more succeeded, but okay. When he woke up to the side of Lan Wangji, he couldn't help babbling nonsense again. But Lan Wangji wasn't as easily provoked as he was in the past, and his only response was, How might you bear a child? Wei Wuxian worked out his sore arms, then pillowed his head on them and sighed. If I could, we'd have a bunch of them running around already, considering the way you screw me day and night. Lan Wangji couldn't bear to listen to such filth. Enough of that. Wei Wuxian propped up a leg and snickered. Shy again? I... Before he could finish his sentence, he suddenly felt Lan Wangji land a soft pat on his hip. Wei Wuxian nearly tumbled off the bed. What are you doing? Checking, Lan Wangji said. Wei Wuxian climbed to his feet in one quick motion despite his shaky legs. No thanks, Lan Zhan. I remember what fine things you did in the dream. No one's ever treated me like that. You're not allowed to do that from now on. Fuck me all you want. I'll open my legs and let you have your way with me, but no more spanking. Lan Wangji pulled him back to bed. I will not. Wei Wuxian relaxed, assured of his promise. You said it, Hang Wanjun. Hmm. The past three nights had been crazy. A wave of drowsiness washed over Wei Wuxian, and he couldn't hang on any longer. He curled back into Lan Wangji's arms, grumbling. No one's ever treated me like that. Lan Wangji stroked his hair and dropped a kiss on his forehead. He shook his head and smiled. That's how you resolve that. Like, yes, that is exactly how you... Boundaries get pushed a little far in this fantasy dream world setting thing. Wei Wuxian's like, maybe that was a little far. You're not allowed to do that uh, uh, again. Please don't. And when they're actually awakened and talking to each other and very straightforward, please don't. And Lan Wangji is like, I will not. Just immediately. He's just, I will not. And he's, Wei Wuxian relaxed, assured of his promise. He is confident in that his partner will respect this new boundary that they've set. And what, because they're in the habit of pushing boundaries. So of course they're going to discover things like this. Like this is, um, 
Okay. In my opinion, after a first read, so keep that in mind. Um, in my opinion, this is a creative and inventive, you know, fantasy, because this uh, um, fantasy is in the genre. Um, it's a fantastical way to explore a couple's sex life when it involves um, a very uh, delicate kink and, you know, boundaries and the pushing of boundaries. And But this is, you know, essentially what um, a healthy uh, BDSM kink relationship, like, looks like. I didn't really, on first read, mind you, I have only just read this, uh, one time, I did not see any real red flags. Like, I just kind of didn't. Maybe I missed one, but on the whole, it just looks like, um... The exploration of the sex lives of two consenting adults taking play in fantasies. It's just in this case, the fantasy is like literally a fantasy dream world, right? I can understand why uh, uh, some people would, you know... Um, not enjoy this as a side story if it's really not your thing it's one of those things it's in general um the whole like rape fantasy deal is not my thing but it's also not triggering for me either so it's not something that i have a really deep immediate um reaction to um so it's that I mean for me like this is fine it was actually really interesting from a character point of view I'm sorry I'm just so stunned I'm babbling um this was not exactly what I expected but um I don't think it's anyone's like f people describe especially situations like this in all kinds of different ways um, and so you really have to like get eyes on it for yourself. And I was going to read this off camera, um, to begin with, I wasn't just going to skip it and then not read it and then therefore have no opinion of my own. I was always going to read this, but I am indeed happy that I chose to read it on camera. Um, cause I think it brings up a lot character wise kink wise relationship wise you know consent wise and a very um like productive and healthy context it's really a good um conversation starter i feel um and a good example of what happens when you approach a relationship dynamic like this from the perspective of not wanting to shy away what um, from what that means, um, but also making sure that you check the boxes so that you are portraying it in an ultimately um, respectful manner. Yeah. Holy crap, that was good. And just like I can see people being uncomfortable with it, I absolutely understand why it would be some people's um, favorite of the side stories. We have not finished the side stories. We still have a couple to go, I believe. Um, so I can't say as to whether or not it's going to be my favorite. Um, but it's definitely going to be up there. This is the kind of like character-driven, really interesting... Uh, portrayals of explicit sex lives that really fascinates me um, on several levels. So, like, of course, this is going to be definitely up there in the side stories. Um, that other one, I can't remember the name of it, but that other one that was kind of like slice of life ghost busting uh, with, uh, you know, their son in tow helping out with the whole case and everything. I think that's going to be up there as well. I think it's kind of oddly enough, kind of like a tie. <laughs> it's like the, the other one, the more slight uh, ghost busting one 
was like a really good example of like an episode from uh, their lives and kind of like what would officially air like on television kind of thing. Whereas this, whereas Incense Burner is a really great like flip side to that of like fan fiction-y, erotic um, examination of the characters. And so both of me, being bisexual, never made a decision in my life. Both parts of me loves both of them. That's going to be a hard choice to come up with um, if I decide to make it, which I may not because bisexual prerogative. So after all the rambling in the free world, we are now at the end of this session for today. I will put a disclaimer at the beginning specifying the... Uh, trigger warnings involved but also you know specifying the dream and uh, fantasy context um which is what was left out i i would have to double check but i'm almost certain that's what was left out in the initial message that i got on tumblr um that very conscientiously uh tried to uh, gave me a content warning um they, uh, I don't believe, I'm almost certain they did not mention that it was in any kind of fantasy or dream context, um, which would change things. But um, yeah, this is the end of this reading stream. We will pick back up in the proper order next time. I am doing three sessions this week so that we definitely finish um, this, the book this week. And, um, yeah, I will see you next time. Please, um, please talk to me about this. I would love, if you know of any, like, the uh, essays on the little translations and why certain words are chosen and all of that jazz, if you know of any essays, uh, please leave a link in the comments below. And um, whatever, talk to me about this. This is so fascinating. If you have any thoughts, if you have any opinions, uh, um is this your speed? Is this not your speed? Why is it? There's so many things to talk about with um, a scene like this. And I would love to hear all of it. Please make sure that we stay respectful of everyone. Everyone has very specific boundaries that may or may not be crossed for a variety of, of reasons. So um, as long as we can just respect each other and communicate kind of calmly... Uh, this could be an extremely uh, productive little conversation going on in the comments. So thank you guys so much for letting me know that I should really give this story a chance. And I, I'm greatly, uh, I'm grateful that you did because I enjoyed this immensely. So I will see you guys very, very soon, most likely tomorrow uh, with the next side story from volume five of Modazushi. And in the meantime, Please, please, please remember to take care of yourself.